Now at five, an Olympian with ties to the Pine Belt found dead this morning. What we know right now and how locals are remembering her straight ahead. Plus, multiple arrests have been made in connection to execution style killings in Texas. The latest developments after a days long manhunt coming up in just a few minutes. And our weather has been beautiful across the area, but we're going to start to see some changes by the weekend. I'll explain more about that in a few minutes, but the news at five starts right now. This evening, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 5. Just days after the death of Laurel Olympic champion Ralph Boston, the Pine Belt is mourning the loss of another Mississippi track and field Olympian. Thank you for joining us. I'm Carrie Leggett Brown. And I'm Michael Clark. Tori Bowie, a three time Olympic sprint medalist and two time world champion, was found dead in a Florida home at just 32 years old. She's a former Southern Miss track star. Her body was found after Orange County Sheriff's deputies were asked to check on a woman who hadn't been seen or heard from in several days. At this time, a cause of death hasn't been released just yet, but investigators don't believe foul play is involved. Bowie was a native of Sand Hill in Rankin County, current USM track and field coach John Stewart says her legacy at USM will live on. Tori had such a tremendous impact as an athlete coming from a small town that uh, you know most people have never heard of and then excelling not just in the NCAA and not just making it to a world-class level but excelling and being successful in a world-class level it just shows that anybody can do it and all it takes is you know a track and a pair of shoes Bowie was a three time All American at the University of Southern Mississippi. We'll have much more on her life and legacy throughout the day here at WDAM 7. And lighter news for you, Pine Belt. If pickleball is your racket, then the renovations coming to Camper Park are right up your alley. Next Wednesday, crews will be on site at Camper Park updating the tennis and pickleball courts. Currently, there are eight tennis courts, but the new updates will include six tennis courts and two pickleball courts. Hattiesburg Mayor Toby Barker says that he is excited to see the project completed. There's a lot of demand for pickleball right now, and uh, we're trying to create capacity. And of course, Camper Park is one of the iconic parks in our city. And so to see an update like this that, that came about through our 1% Parks and Recreation tax that our citizens uh, passed back in 2019 is uh, exciting. Barker says the renovation should take around three months to complete. William Carey University and the Hattiesburg business community recognized leadership in small businesses. It was a part of an annual awards luncheon that also presented scholarships to several deserving businesses and business students. Charles Harrington tells us more. A downtown Hattiesburg business that opened just a decade ago has been recognized for its growth and contributions to the Hub City economy. Today, William Carey University presented the Lucky Rabbit Variety Store with its Small Business Leadership Award. Looking at the other businesses that have received this award 30 years before we received it, it's just such an honor to be included in that list of prestigious and staple Hattiesburg businesses. The award was presented during this annual luncheon at Tatum Hall. William Carey President Dr. Ben Burnett says he was especially happy to honor a downtown business this year. We've been here in downtown since 1906, so we're connected uh, literally and th historically to, to downtown. So any, any, any downtown business we want to support and help as well. Featured speaker for the event was Noah Harris. He's a Hattiesburg native and recent Harvard University graduate who was also the first African-American male student body president in that school's history. He spoke about what small business can do to keep younger workers in Mississippi. Sometimes it can it can be hard to take stock of the impact that you're having in the people's lives that you're changing and so just wanted to show them that a young person uh, among many young people um, are, are really appreciated for what they do and and I know that they can do a lot to to keep young people in the state. Three students studying business at William Carey were also presented with scholarships during today's luncheon. Charles Harrington, WDAM 7 on your side. And William Carey presented its first small business leadership award to Simmons Furniture Company back in 1990. 
All right, now let's check in with our first alert weather team. All right, Patrick, what do you have to tell us about this beautiful day? Yeah, today has been a beautiful afternoon. We saw a lot of sunshine and it's been truly a magnificent afternoon. 82 degrees right now. That's what we're sitting at as we take a live look over the city of Hattiesburg this afternoon. This is Highway 49 looking down at Hardy Street and traffic looks to be moving pretty smoothly out there. It was a nice afternoon. Like I said, we made it up into the low 80s. All my for today shows exactly how warm it got here across South Mississippi. Low 80s, 81 degrees was the afternoon high. And as we take a look at things right now, 82 is the temperature in Hattiesburg, so they'll have to fine tune that. 80 in Laurel, 80 in uh, some raw, 79 in Taylorsville, and 78 down towards Collins. And the weather is going to be perfect this evening for any outdoor plans that you may have. But how long will it stay like this? Well, we're going to take a full look at your forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Well, the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation is investigating an officer involved shooting involving a George County Sheriff's Department member. The shooting happened around 5 o'clock this morning after a nearly 16 hour standoff. MBI says deputies from George County attempted to serve a warrant against a man for making terroristic threats when the man pointed a weapon at deputies. When deputies arrived, he barricaded himself in his home. No other officer was injured. No officer was injured in the incident, but the man died. MBI is currently investigating and gathering evidence. The coroner identified the man as Michael Roy Carney. Well, after a days long manhunt last night, Texas authorities captured the man accused of killing five people in Cleveland, Texas, just last Friday. Authorities said the suspect was arrested in a house just miles from where the shootings took place. Police also arrested others accused of helping the suspect get away. Gloria Pazmino tells us more. This is an unspeakable murder, unspeakable tragedy, but Mr. Orpeza will be held accountable. Hiding in a closet underneath some laundry. That's how police say they found Francisco Oropesa, the man accused of killing five people, including a nine-year-old child, in Cleveland, Texas, last Friday. He's in this jail right here. Witnesses say Oropesa opened fire after neighbors asked him to stop shooting his rifle near their home. After refusing, the man charged into his neighbor's home, killing four adults and a child. Oropesa, a 38-year-old Mexican national, is being held on five counts of murder with bond set at $5 million. We just want to thank the person who had the courage and bravery to call in the suspect's location. Police also arrested a woman who lived and shared a child with the suspect. D.V. Mara Lamar Nava was arrested Tuesday and is facing charges of hindering the apprehension and detention of a known felon. What we believe that Ms. Nava was doing is that she was providing him with material aid and encouragement, uh, food, clothes, uh, and had, uh, and had uh, arranged transport to this house. A second person was arrested under suspicion of helping Oropesa escape the neighborhood where the shooting took place. The suspects are expected to meet with the judge Wednesday to review charges and the terms of their detention. I want to be able to look that family in the eyes and say that justice was done at the end of this. I'm Gloria Pasmino reporting. And coming up after the break, we're going to take a full look at your forecast, which includes some changes by the weekend. I'll explain more on the other side. 